welcome to Club Officer Training. Francesca, thank you so much for facilitating. I'm Kathy Donovan, the Program Quality Director for District 40, and we're here to touch base on what the, each of the officer roles, the club officers, and make sure that anybody who's attending who has a question can get that question answered. It's intended for folks who want to look at another kind of office, uh, for folks who are stepping into perhaps the president role and need to know what all the other officers do. And it's also for new clubs that haven't gone to club officer training yet. Since we do that twice a year, a club can charter in the middle of that and not have the training to start their club off. So we have this webinar Wednesday that we do, I think about every other month this year. We've got to figure out how often to do that for next year for, for new club officers. But we, we're recording it today so that anybody who becomes a new club officer can get this recording and then uh, get a little bit of insight. Let's start off with the seven officers. They're a team and their team lead is the president. So the president is responsible for the club's success. Overall, he is also responsible to make sure that all the officers know what they're doing and that each of the members is satisfied. So it's sort of like the buck stops there. He's similar to the president or CEO of a company, if you want to think of it like that. And typically the best presidents have already been another officer at one point or time or another. The Vice President of Education, he plans the program for the club with the input from the members. That is the wildly important goal. A lot of times the officers can get caught up in side jobs and other things that look shiny and new, but by and large, the Vice President of Education makes sure that the club meetings contain the opportunities for each member to achieve their educational goals. And if the vice president of education is not doing that, if you've got roles that aren't being filled and that kind of thing, then they need to step in and make some changes. The vice president of membership, they welcome new members. They maintain close ties with the members. I like to think of them as the nurturing and caring committee. They make sure the members are getting what they need. A lot of clubs have the vice president of membership do different things. One club might have the vice president of membership enter new members. Another club might have them just do the paperwork when a new member joins. Another club might have the vice president membership help with the mentoring program and lead that. So it just depends upon how you work together as a team to figure out who does what and make sure that none of the things that are wildly important get missed. The next one that I want to talk about, and I have something interrupting <laughs> my computer. The next one I want to talk about is Vice President of Public Relations. They post information externally about the club. It could be announcements about events that are going on with the club, or it could be describing Toastmasters to perspective members. These first four officer roles all have the word president in them. That is indicative of the fact that these are ones where we encourage you to get teams. For example, when I was vice president of education, I had a team of four people on my education committee for a club. And we put together what we call the mentor matchup. And we talked about how often mentors should switch and all other things that were helpful to building a program to meet everybody's needs. We scheduled a speakathon so that we just did a bunch of speeches. We scheduled extra meetings when we needed to. We also looked at opportunities to uh, uh, cancel meetings when they weren't needed around the holidays and made sure that that still fit with each member's goals. And we would simply make uh, arrangements too for members to present outside of the meetings. If a member wanted to present something outside of the meeting, they would work with the CPE or the education committee because to get credit, you have to have a Toastmaster evaluate it. And so a Toastmaster would go with them to the event. I have, I have gone to college campuses and evaluated a Toastmaster for a speech they gave for class with permission from the professor, for example. And that was very much uh, appreciated by the Toastmaster. We now have a Toastmaster for life there. 
So the other offices don't have the word president in them, and they are, my computer wants me to restart. Brief. Um, the other three officers typically are not offices that that lend themselves to doing things in a group. For example, secretary. It just takes one person to type up the minutes. <laughs> now they can sh definitely share the minutes with everybody and ask for input, and they should. And that's still a part of the teamwork. This this whole team works together, all seven officers. The treasurer keeps the financial records, whether you have a bank account or not. They still um, will remind everybody when it's time to pay dues. And if there is a need for resources, they might do a, a fundraiser where you buy, say, a lectern or something for the tables. You still don't establish an account, but they would make sure that, you know, people chip in and that it's all accounted for. Uh, Sergeant in Arms is a steward for the club property, manages logistics for the physical room. They're very important. They also help manage the contests, the teach the sergeant at arms for the contest what it is they need to do. So all together, you need all seven officers operating. And when you have a club that has all seven operators, or, sorry, officers operating at full capacity, then you've got a, a very successful framework for your members to thrive. Are there any questions with anything that I've talked about so far about the officer team? Done for me. Okay. All right. I have, a, I have an anecdote, Kathy, about the BPE, which is my favorite uh, role, and being able to present outside of Toastmasters. It just happened with this event in Vegas. And coincidentally, there is a DTM who belongs to the actual manufacturer who evaluated me. And of course, he did it on, uh, on an online form. And we forwarded it to my VP at my home club. And just like you're saying, I mean, it's such a great feeling to network through Toastmasters and get credit outside the club. Great. Thanks, Francesco. That's wonderful. Okay. Uh, I see, hey, I see, I see in the footnotes about a new abbreviation you have. What is VCM? Vice President Membership. A uh, BCM, B as in boy, C as in. Oh, I don't know. Uh, what footnote is that? Uh, base camp manager in, in pathways. Oh, do Thank you, you have a different slide deck? Are you looking at a different slide deck than I am? No, I'm, no, I'm, I'm, I'm taking I'm, notes. I'm looking, at, I'm looking at your slide. If you go to the notes section, B, BPE, left parenthesis, now BCM. And I wasn't sure Are what BCM. Are you looking at a. Are the slides blue or are they red? They're green. They're green? Kathy, it's your slides. I'm only taking notes at the bottom. I'll send them back to you. Oh, okay. Those are Francesco's notes. I wasn't aware of what he was doing that. Yeah. yeah. Base camp manager is a role that the VPE it's usually plays. Yeah, but, yes, but the yeah, president yeah, and secretary it's also rolling. have that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. President I got it. <laughs> yeah, it just Kathy. threw me. <laughs> no worries. Okay, let's go to the president role. President is responsible for all this teamwork. It might even be fun for a president to do a team building exercise outside of the meetings where you don't even talk about Toastmasters. I did this for the district officers. We went to one of those breakout game rooms and we spent an hour working together and you have to work together in those. You cannot solve the puzzle and break out of the room without multiple people doing different things at different times. So um, they schedule and facilitate the executive committee meeting. I recommend once a month, once a quarter at a minimum. For new presidents who are getting used to their team, you might want one every other week for a few weeks and then go to once a month and then go to once a quarter. You've got to have a planning session for the success plan. And a lot of folks get confused. They think, well, shouldn't the club do that? But if the officers don't present an outline for the club, then you're not going to be able to build one. 
most clubs have new members that come in throughout the whole year that have not participated in a club success plan process. So in July, I recommend that the executive committee get together, the president calls the meeting, and then you put an outline together of what you're thinking, and then you run it by the club, and the VPE actually um, schedules a good portion of meeting for that club success plan conversation. If the members say, I would like to get uh, to my next education level in the next six months, then we need to note that, and that is becomes part of the sub club success. The club success mm -hmm. is simply a culmination of all the member success. The critical responsibilities need to be covered. The president just needs to make sure everybody's doing something. If nobody's sending a welcome email when guests have come and gone to a meeting, then I think that you know that's a critical activity. We just need to make sure it's being done. There's planning and there's execution. And as executives, they need to make sure that it is happening. And how do you do that? The club president's going to have to figure out how he's going to validate that the important stuff is getting done. And how else is he going to know that unless he asks them? And that's not something you really can ask in the middle of a club meeting. You really have to have officer meetings outside of the club, and the president is the one to call them. If the president is not calling them, they typically don't happen. And then that's when the, the club starts falling apart in a few years. They're wondering what the heck happened. The other thing that the president does is typically at the end of the meeting for about two or three minutes, the president asks if there's any new or old business for discussion, make sure that any district announcements are made and they also um, might get a proxy for the annual district business meeting because they are responsible for going to the annual business meeting which is in week from this coming weekend if they can't go then they need to give a proxy to someone the area director council meetings is the other thing that the president attends and the area director pulls the presidents together and sometimes the VPEs and they have them working together to talk about different problems. It's a great way to network. It's a great way to share with another president. Hey, I tried this. It didn't work. Hey, I, I'm doing this. It's working really well. So they, they, they have a chance to talk to somebody who's doing their role because no one else in the club is doing their role. <laughs> So you can feel like an island. If if officers stay to themselves and they don't talk to other officers who do their same role, then they're not growing. And the club is not flourishing and the club is not trying new things. So the best way to do that is at club officer training. It's at the bottom of the president's slide and the president needs to go once in the summer and once in the winter. We call it the winter when the mid-year. And work with other presidents, and especially at the mid-year one, we really open that up for discussion so officers can network and share what's working well. So is there anything about the president, especially you, Pam, that you want to talk about? Any Anything that you're looking at that role and going, oh, I wonder what this is about? It's awesome. a great reminder. <laughs> okay. It it is a great, great position. And there are a few district officer positions that you cannot hold unless you've been a president. So I think it's a great thing that you raised your hand and stepped forward to do it. And if you have any questions about what it is you need to do, I'm available next year for you to um, just ping me, email me if you have any questions. Okay, let's go to Vice President Education. I'm going to do this one and the other ones fairly quickly. Um, Vice President Education works with the Toastmaster for each meeting. Some of the best clubs have a cadence whereby the Vice President Education, two weeks before the meeting, has most all the roles filled out. They send it to the Toastmaster. The Toastmaster finishes out doing the roles, getting the introductions for the speeches, and making sure that uh, everybody had something to do. I can send that cadence if you want. 
They preside over the meetings when the president is absent because they're number two. They also vote at the annual district business meeting. The two votes are the president and the VPE. This coming week from Saturday, we need a third of the clubs to be present in order to have a quorum. If we don't have a quorum, we can't vote. If we can't vote, then we do not have district officers for next year elected. And they won't be able to take office until we go through a very expensive, very laborious process, which is going to pull the district officers away from what they should be doing. So I, I highly recommend that uh, for your clubs in particular, if you're going to the conference, ask the president and VPE if they're going. And if they're not, you can carry their vote for them. It has to be a member of the club. You cannot delegate the votes for the district business meeting to anyone outside of the club. It has to be a club member. <clears throat> Vice President <clears throat> membership. <coughs> Excuse me. They work the most closely with the VPPR and the members to promote the club. <clears throat> they also make sure the members are getting their benefits and they know what each member's goals are and they can have a membership committee. I can't highly recommend this committee enough. The open houses, the cadence that the district recommends for each club is two to four a year for open houses slash membership drives. Membership drives can be something as simple as each one bring one and somebody brings a cake. You might have uh, somebody uh, managing welcomes at contests if you publicize your contest to the public and open that up as an open house it's a wonderful opportunity for people to come see part of toastmasters they also attend the club officer training twice a year in fact you're going to see that on every slide for each of the officers because they all do <clears throat> vice president of public relations they share club and district announcements with the club and they also share club announcements with folks in the media, folks who are um, in, in the market area of the club. In other words, if I'm a VPPR, I am going to make sure that I let everybody that I possibly can know about Toastmasters that is able to drive to a meeting on a regular basis or for a virtual club that's able to attend the virtual club on a regular basis. So this is the new virtual clubs is a little bit of a challenge for the VPPR, but initially and still for the most part, if you've got a club, let's say in um, Brownsville, and I don't know if there's even a Brownsville in our district, you're going to make sure that everybody in Brownsville, all the businesses, all the community organizations know about Toastmasters. And the more the other organizations know about Toastmasters, the more often you're going to have folks coming in. And once they join Toastmasters, the other organizations benefit. So it's very important to remember that we're, we're offering something really wonderful for everyone else. And the vice president of public relations, you could say, well, the whole club is his team, <laughs> which is true. But if he has some people he can delegate to to do press releases, that's wonderful because then now he's got an assistant or two that can mm -hmm. learn part of the role and then step into that role the following year. Multiple hands make the work lighter. Secretary, there is some teamwork. They need to work with the president on the business record to make sure the club charter is updated whenever the club charter needs to be updated. For example, when the club location changes, we need to update the records at Toastmasters International. It takes minutes at all the executive committee meetings and at the regular meetings. I know one secretary who sent out the minutes to the meeting and it looked like a newsletter or a Facebook page because it had pictures of the people who were in the meeting. It, it was fun to read. I'd never seen minutes that were so colorful. It was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And that club is flourishing. I think they have 10 DCP points now. And they have they get more than the minimum DCP points, or I shouldn't say points, awards. They might have six or seven people getting a leadership award when you only need two. You know, there's only two um, 
leadership awards that get you a point. After that, there's no points. But it's all about the members and what they're getting. It's not, you know, reaching a minimum goal. And then the treasurer, of course, works on the financial records. They need to present a financial report to the club regularly based upon what the club agrees on. And they need to ensure that an audit is performed. And I've performed audits. Um, they don't do the audit, of course. Someone else is auditing them. They preside over the meetings when all the other officers are there. They keep all payments, uh, keep track of all payments and disbursements, and then they attend the club officer training. Then the sergeant at arms, which Pam, you know about that one, works with the president on the meeting locations, the resources, endless help to set up the meeting if somebody wants a U shape versus theater style. Um, make sure the equipment is safe, operable, take care of the banner, that kind of thing, and uh, maintains all the physical assets. So that's a brief overview of each officer, but there's a lot more to learn. Each session at the officer training that happens twice a year is 40 minutes for one office alone. And even then, sometimes the officers are thinking, boy, I wish I had more time, which to that I say, then start networking with your other officers in your other clubs and call each other up on the phone if you have a question or just want to talk or, you know, set a date. Two clubs could get together and do an event together, which is a heck of a lot of fun. I know one set of clubs does a Tall Tales contest every year and they sit around a campfire and they do the one contest that District 40 doesn't sponsor, which is Tall Tales. There are five clubs or five contests that you can run according to Toastmasters International and the Tall Tales is one of them that we, we don't. You can only do four and there's five available. So they get together and Tall Tales is where I guess you can tell the biggest lie. You try to tell the biggest lie but make it believable. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So so those clubs have the right idea. It's It's more than just being in meetings. It's more than getting together as officers. It's all about working as a team and talking about what it is you all want to do and then have the thrill of making it happen. Do you have any questions about the role of any of the officers or maybe some, some input, some anecdotes like what Francesco has, something you can share? No? Okay, I guess we can quit recording then. Okay. Yes, we're done. Did 